Hello guys. Um, king of the table. Um, less than two weeks. What's today? 20, 11, 12 days. Only 12 days later. In my honest opinion, this is the best king of the table cards um, I have ever seen. Um, whenever I look at the subject, arm wrestling, I look at the uh, subject not from the uh, popularity uh, way, even though this event is like full with the very popular athletes and very high level rank athletes, but I look at it from the pure arm wrestling perspective. Like for example, uh, last event we had so many world title matches, like we had uh, probably the most important match in the history, Devon versus Levan. But my favorite match was um, Nugzari uh, versus uh, Petro. Uh, this this match was for me the most interesting. And now the with the upcoming King of the Table, all of the matches are very very interested interesting from the pure arm wrestling perspective. Um, even the additional uh, match. Uh, Ryan Bowman versus Schoolboy. That, that, that is very interesting because I remember uh, Ryan Bowman beating uh, uh, Khalid, but Khalid had a super match against uh, Schoolboy, and that match was a very tough one. Very tough match it was. And so I can't really say that the result of the uh, Khalid versus Ryan match was super healthy, you know, to judge, you know, because one had a super match, other and very tough match, the other one didn't. So, so this match is kind of it is gonna show um, where these athletes are, both Ryan and uh, Schoolboy. And <clears throat> my favorite is Schoolboy here. He is bigger, uh, probably near 20 kilo heavier and <clears throat> much taller. Uh, real super heavyweight guy. <clears throat> but of course, um, I don't know how much the match that he had with uh, Leonidas will affect and also of course we can't underestimate who knows maybe maybe um, Ryan will beat him and would beat him even he, he didn't have the uh, Leonidas match but um, as of now I see like 65% to 35% for uh, Leonidas <clears throat> and Another match is Pauline versus Lachlan. Pauline versus Lachlan. I see Paul very explosive, very explosive. And his risk to control opponents pronator um, with the start, very effective, very effective. And I believe that he will have that chance. But can he finish it? Can he finish finish it? Like I kind of believe he will be faster. I, I kind of believe that he will pass the center. But passing the center is gonna be somewhere that Lachlan will still have his bicep lock or he will be too open like this that it will not be possible to bring back. Um, I don't know, I'm talking about fresh matches, later rounds, things maybe much different, but like fresh starts, I believe that Paul will have the um, will have the will pass the center, but I don't know it will be enough or not because if if Lachlan has the um, bicep lock, the joint lock, you know here, uh, he is very very strong. Then then it will be a very tough match. And so any, any match that stops uh, in a near equal position, I give the edge to Lachlan. 
but Paul may just right from start to finishing, he may just do the job, you know, but we will see. <clears throat> Other than this, we have Revas Lutitze versus Georgi Di Zerano, two of the great athletes. Last time I talked with uh, Revas, he he was 170 kilo. Um, I told him that he needs some cardio. I'm sure that he's stronger now, but when the matches, when the super match is something that you need to win four rounds, then like when it is best of seven, then you may need endurance. And the opponent that he has, Georgi Dizarano, has one of the best endurance um, in the game. So, in my opinion, fresh, fresh, raw power, start everything, Revas will have the advantage. But I don't know if he can do that four times or not. If he's super dominant, then he can do that four times. But if he somehow gets stopped by the Zerano, then, then he, may, he may lose the match. <clears throat> Other match, very, very interesting match is Michael Todd versus Lars. Um, that, that is a very interesting match. Michael is an open arm top roller, while Lars is just going exactly to the direction that Michael is going. <clears throat> That, that is very, very interesting match. Very interesting match. One with super defensive luck, and the other one is super offensive shoulder pressure. <coughs> Stylistically, very, very interesting match. And I know Michael has big goals, but I don't think Lars is coming to Dubai to lose either. I believe Lars also has big dreams. Uh, with the opportunities that today's our masters have, I think they all have big dreams because they can see the future bright. <clears throat> okay, let's go to uh, the, the next ones. This one is an incredible match, incredible match, and just like I will be like a kid in a candy store uh, while watching this. Oleg Petrenko and Kedir Galion Garboev, incredible. I know both have super big dreams, like the other ones. Like Petrenko was looking for a title match against Dadikian, and on Garbaev had the title for three times and lost against Tatashings and he was super upset, super upset. And I can understand him, yeah. And like Petrenko is this close to the title shot, this close. While Ongarbev cannot afford to have another loss. He cannot. So they bought just cannot lose, you know. I believe Petrenko has more horsepower, while Ongarbev has more options. Incredible match. I, I will just sit and enjoy. Incredible. And now we also have another match that is stylistically not exactly, but very similar to Michael versus Lars match. Kamil Yablonski versus Vitali Laletin. Many people think that Vitali is unofficially number one rank athlete. Um, they think that he is not number one because he still didn't have the opportunity, which for sure he will have, especially if he beats uh, Kamil. And so. 
that that is a very interesting match. That's a very interesting match, and I people thinks La Latin is gonna win easily. I mean, not everyone, but majority. I, I just cannot picture that. I just cannot picture that. I cannot picture La Latin. Especially in strap, flash pinning, Kamil. I, I don't know. I kind of think that his pressure dominance is coming from outside, not not here. But if we don't have the control here to block Kamil's arm, and if you are over pronating when you're going sideways here is the place that Kamil is gonna put his dead wrist pressure. If, if, if somehow, if somehow, Laletin can put so much back pressure just to make sure that Kamil's arm is getting out of his locked spot. And if, if, if La Latin can also add a like, super strong cup to make sure to uh, make Camille's palm facing up like this, because if, if it doesn't, if it is like this, he will put all the pressure with the sport of his tricep. But once you turn here, then the tricep is not working in the winning side, but losing side. So to control in the pronator of uh, Camille, can be the key for Laletin. So if Laletin makes a mistake, and if Kamil puts his shoulder on his sweet spot, I don't think that, I see like very hard, very hard to beat Kamil in that position, very hard. But there is a possibility if, if Laletin does everything right, and then there is a possibility that Lalecin uh, will beat Kamil. So I don't see this match like something. It is it is all about who prepared better plan and will apply better. I don't think it is all about the power, especially from Lalecin's. Uh, side it's not about just full pressure power but i think you you need to unlock those angles to have effective pressure so we will see we will see i won't be surprised if Laletin wins and i won't be surprised if if kamil wins but if anyone who is underestimating kamil is making big mistake that guy's pressure to the pad once he has his position, it's deadly. You know, it's just like, it is very strong, very strong pressure. Anyways, and then we have the, the main event, Artem Morozov, who is the super heavyweight champion of the world with left arm, against Ivan Matushenko, who is the heavyweight champion of the world. Uh, Ivan Matushenko has nothing to lose, absolutely nothing to lose, uh, but everything to gain. Being 115 kilo and having this title shot, and if he if he wins, then that will be historical. It will be incredible. While Morozov has won this title <coughs> title match three times already, uh, he cannot afford to lose. Who do I think is stronger? I think Morozov is stronger. Who do I think is more experienced? It is Ivan Matushenko. Who do I think is faster? It is Ivan Matushenko. So who do I think have the best endurance or better endurance, I should say? It is probably Morozov, but still depending on what position he will be uh, stopping Iwan. 
We will see. We will see. If E1 would be effective and fast enough to move his winning side and catch Morozo outside of his 90 degree elbow joint lock, then, then the, 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 he has a good chance of winning. But any match that he, uh, Morozo will have his joint lock, bicep lock, as he likes, I don't think Ivan can win that match. Anyway, so I believe this is an incredible card. It will be, I have watched many King of the Table events. I enjoyed all of them. Some of them I enjoy more than the others, but this one will be the um, most enjoyable one. And I have no doubt that the quality of the matches are top notch. Anyways, guys, you all take care of yourself and I will be coming with more news about July and August event. You all take care.